Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with So So No Free Red episode number 15 reaction. Alright, the previous episode was another great episode. Uh, we got to see the first part. We got to see um, uh, Stark and uh, Fern. Uh, like it was Fer Fern's birthday. Stark wasn't didn't buy anything for her. That's why she was mad. And you know, later on we got to know that Stark actually didn't know what to buy. She, he thought that if he bought something that she didn't like, you know, like she'll get mad at him or something like that. And, uh, you know, in the end, uh, they go out together to buy something. And, uh, you know, like sh he ends up picking the uh, mirrored lotus. I think that's what he calls. Uh, that's what it's called. Uh, like a, like a bracelet of it. And uh, yeah, obviously that kind of denotes like eternal love or something like that. And, you know, like uh, she, he didn't know that at the beginning. But yeah, you know, that's what happened. And... It kind of carries on that whole thing in the second part of the uh, episode as well, where we get to see that Himmel also gave a similar thing, which was a mirrored lotus ornament in the form of a ring to Freerin. And Freerin was looking at it and, you know, they kind of got into a little trouble with a big bird and she ended up dropping it. In the end, at first she thought she's not, she's just going to give up on it because, you know, like she didn't want to bother others uh, due to her problems. But, you know, Fern was like, no, you know, like, you, it's, it's important to you. So you should, you should try to get it back. And yeah, she ends up finding it by the end of it. And uh, then we get a little bit of a flashback, which was probably one of the best parts of this, that episode, where we get to see that Himmel bought it for free run and actually put it on her finger. And uh, yeah, that's where it ended. So let's see what happens in today's episode. This is episode number um, 15. Let us get started. I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here, sync it to whichever is the preference, and let's begin. <coughs> okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. <coughs> hmm. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Smells like trouble. Oh, okay. Love hills. Mm, if you're sleepy. <laughs> oh my god. I think like three or is it four years? Four years, there you go. Yeah. A mere five years, four years. <laughs> According to Freerun, obviously. <laughs> What? Um. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Bruh. Oh no, he's gonna say something weird. Yeah. Oh boy. 
She's a granny. <laughs> Obviously, age wise. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh. What's wait? What's happening to this village? What the hell? It's a weird village. Everyone's sleeping. But it's like unconscious, like you know. But the horse was, you know, the horse was still. That's one thing to keep in mind. You know, the animals are still. <laughs> oh my god. Mm, it only targets human beings. The animals are fine. Ooh, damn. Oh. Ah, I see, I see. Hmm. Oh, okay. So then elf. Oh, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Going to the priest to take out your curse. And he's a priest. So. Hmm. It's like the magic. Uh, interesting. <laughs> it's not painted because he cannot, she cannot, you know. I see. Oh. Hmm. I see. Wait, what about Fern and Stark then? <laughs> okay. Duels. Oh, okay. Oh, that's nice. Hmm. Um, Stark is is he really? Wait. Oh my God. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I'm guessing Fern is not getting affected maybe because she's a mage, she has better resistance, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh, that makes sense. Why, like Fern was also like feeling asleep, falling asleep, you remember, in the carriage? Hmm, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh boy, this is bad. Right, hopefully Freedom doesn't fall asleep. I doubt she will. Oh no, she is. I think that's all she needs. Oh boy. No, don't worry. She can. I'm. I'm pretty sure she can take care of it in five seconds. That's all she needs. But you know. This is a bad situation. Damn. Oh, it's like a... 
like a, what do you call them? Raflasia or something like that? Like, you know, chaos flower. Tap away, mono, Damn! Hmm. Mirror. Right. Three spears of the... Oh no! It defended itself. Good God. Okay, wake up Freeran. She, she said that just, just wake her up. Hmm. Yeah, just... I guess that's one way to look at it. He, he is right. <laughs> uh, he, he, he remembers. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, she did tell them to wake her up. Yeah, so wake her up. She she told you to wake her up. So just just wake her up. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Bah. Oh, she, oh, damn, she just wiped everything out. Yeah, it, it wasn't even able to guard itself from the, you know, like, it pierced through the... <laughs> yeah, they're awake. <laughs> well... <coughs> Well, it was... <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, we're almost there, so. Uh off oh, halfway. Ooh, we need a part-time job. What the? These people look important. Yeah. Hello? Um, what's happening? Yeah, why? <laughs>
Wait, she knows him. I guess she's been living for so long. <laughs> Can't you see her ears? Look at her ears. Yeah, what gives you the right to just barge in? Yeah. Bro, why is he so so cocky? Like it's like Oh yeah, they do need money. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh. Hmm. Really? What? Okay. Wait, that's... Isn't that... His brother? His brother, the... Okay, wait, so that's not his brother. Okay, never mind. So it's like someone really identical to him. Damn, they look so similar. Okay. So I think they need him to, yeah, like pose as his son for some kind of a reason. Yeah, there you go. So he has to play the part of his deceased son. This is going to take a long time, wouldn't it? What? So war? A ball, I'm guessing? Oh, damn. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's true. A makeup. Uh, or that. Okay. Yeah. Bah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have to learn dancing and everything. So they're going to be staying here for a while now. <laughs> Poor Stark, everyone's just having dessert and pastries while he's just <laughs> like learning all these like, uh, you know, etiquettes, yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, but I, you know, he is the leader of, so he has to play that part. Oh. Hmm. Who is this? Oh, that's his other, other son. Okay. Oh, but this situation is so similar to... Yeah, 
Yo, this, this, this whole situation is just so similar. Like, they look literally the same. Hmm. He's remembering his. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. There you go. This is where he differs from his father. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with, with that <laughs> deadpan face, you say her, you did well, kid, uh, son. Hmm. She's just eating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Oh no Priya's just having the time of her life She's just like you know Just there Whoa Oh, there it is, this Soyer, I think that's what they called it. It's only been one month, I thought it's been three or four months or something. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, she's still kind of stiff, you know, like her movements. <laughs> yeah, he's been practicing for a while, while Fern has recently started it. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> what is he eating? <laughs> oh my god. She just wants to eat. Yep. <laughs> I was wondering, like, you know, like his eye patch. Ah, oh, that's why he didn't. Okay. It's so weird. He looks exactly like his dad as well. You know, like this guy. I, I, I we saw his dad before. You know, like Shark's dad. That's his dad, isn't it? Yeah, we saw in the flashback. No, yeah. He has to move on. Yep. No, he, he has his new family. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's why he's so... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, she's picking her grimoire. Which one she wants to take? Half a day. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I think this is the first time he's spoken properly. Hmm. Well. Ah, uh, there you go. Now he's being more honest to his, you know, feelings. Hmm. Oh, did she find something? What was it? Oh, that's it. Wait, there was no ending song, was there? All right. Okay, that was this episode. Another great episode. Wow. All right. Excuse me. So, today's episode, um, the first part was we get to see, um, oh my god, what was his name? Sign. Yeah, Sign. Sign's, you know, like, abilities in a more, not, I guess it wasn't really that, but the whole, uh, the first part of the episode kind of showed us how you know, like, Sign starts, I guess you could say, getting along better with his party, his new party. Because that whole section kind of showed us how Sign was finding the whole situation a little bit, I guess you could say, the, he, he didn't really know what to do. Even though Frieden told him that, trust me, just wake me up. He was thinking, oh no, if, you know, like, if she, obviously there's like a five second that I can wake her up. So... If she attacks and the thing deflects it, uh, the, the, the village is going to get destroyed and, you know, stuff like that, he was thinking. And he wasn't really fully, like, as, as he himself says, that I haven't really hung out mu mu much for a much, like, you know, long time with these people. And I don't really know them uh, properly. So I don't know, you know, like, how I should move on with this whole situation. You know, like, so he didn't know how to, to work in a team because obviously they haven't really known each other for long. But he did remember what um, Heiter told him once when he was a kid that, you know, like, we, even though we were a group, you know, like, we don't know how each other fights. You know, in, in that manner, we didn't really have that much of a teamwork. However, one thing, uh, like, you know, I knew, and I'm pretty sure everyone knew, is that we believed Free Ren. You know, we trusted her and we knew that she, when she said that I'm going to defeat the Demon King, a uh, Demon Lord, she will do it. You know, so, you know, like, all that we had was trust in her, and that's all that we put on her. And it worked out by the end of it. So, you know, like, she, he remembered that and he decided to trust Free Ren. Even though there was a lot of things kind of moving on in his head, he was thinking like, oh, there won't be much time. How can she defeat the thing? Also, the thing is deflecting magic attacks. So what about that? Even though there was all of these questions in his head, he didn't think much of it. And he was like, all right, she told me to wake her up. I'm just going to do that and trust her. And he does that. It works out, you know. And that's the thing, you know, like Free Ren is an elf who has been living for so long. And... She, like, even though she is clueless about a lot of things, she doesn't have any type of, <laughs> like, understanding at how human relationships work. There's one thing that she has plenty, that is experience. She has huge amounts of experience. So, especially in a battle situation, I feel like she can wake up and look at the battlefield for five minutes and immediately understand what's going on and what to do. And properly execute everything. And that's what she did. She woke up and she herself said that, oh, I saw that and I realized this is how I should do it. 
And that's what I did. And it worked out. And I'm like, immediately, without it, they didn't, it, she didn't even need five minutes. She needed like five seconds. She woke up and just shot her shot and it worked. So there you go. That's, that's one thing that she has plenty. That is experience, battle experience. So yeah, you know, like uh, obviously Sign realized that, yeah, you know what? You know, I, I, today they, they got a little bit closer as a group and as a party, they became a lot more acquainted with each other. And yeah, you know, that kind of thing. So that was the first section. And then there was the final section where we get to see, um, you know, like Stark and this dude who, you know, like lost his son and his son looked extremely like him, like Stark. And that's why Stark had to act as his son for a little while to keep up the morale of the, uh, the, the, the troops. And uh, yeah, for that, he had to learn all of these, like, you know, social etiquettes and everything. And you know what? I feel like this is going to come in handy in the future. Like, I don't know how, but I feel like it's somehow going to come in handy. You know, all these things, new things that he learned, the social etiquette, like how to dance and everything. I don't know, maybe somewhere down the line, he might actually need to use these things, you know, for something, maybe, I don't know, like some, some kind of a situation. Like, it's, it's, it's always good to have, like, gain more knowledge about something, be it anything. And so, in, in, if you think about it like that, I feel like this whole, like, situation was, like, completely like a full-on like profit for them in every single department they got money you know to spend a lot of money not only that stark uh, and fern they got to like learn all of these new things like i said these social etiquettes and stuff we don't know when we we will need all of this but it's always good to have more knowledge you know about be it anything you know so the fact that they learned all of these for free Instead, they got paid for it. If you think about it like that, you know, that this is like a very good thing that happened. You know, um, they got money for it and they got uh, these all of these new things they got to learn. Friend got like, I don't know, like nice food every single day. They were like every single day she was eating donuts. <laughs> That's what it looked like. And she was reading like books from the library or whatever. So Friedan also had a great time. So all in all, this was like a full on profit in my opinion, like, and obviously, um, their job that they were, they had to do is that, you know, like, keep the troops morale up, go and take part in that little ball, that little banquet they had. And uh, yeah, and if you think about it from the that guy, his perspective, I guess you could say, for a little amount of time, he, 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 he got, you know, like he got his son back for a momentary amount of time. And, you know, the, I guess you could say the regret that he had, where he had to, you know, where he told his son that, oh, don't show my, show your face ever again. And he left and then he lost him after that. You know, that regret that he must have felt like, you know, like he, after meeting Stark and like, you know, for this one month, you know, like, I feel like at least he was able to reduce that a little bit. Um, he's still obviously regretful, but you know, like, and he also learned something, I guess you could say, like, learned something about himself is that, you know, like, you need to be truthful about, you know, like, a few things, like, you know, like, affection towards your child. You cannot be awkward in that situation. And, you know, otherwise it's going to, you know, from the child's perspective, it's not good. The child will think that you hate him, you know. Obviously, that wasn't the case. He he cared plenty for his, you know, for the for the younger brother, but he wasn't able to properly express it. Um, and you know, like she, he also learned that. And now, as we got to see after that, in the end, he is like now training with his younger son, and you know, like that that was good. And yeah, so all in all, I guess you could say everyone kind of. Um, profited from this whole thing by the end you know they each gained something um, and uh, yeah they did have to stay one month there for it but you know what one month's one month's nothing <laughs> so yeah so there you go that was a that was a great episode you know like overall um, yeah a, a really nice episode one thing I need to mention here the whole situation was so eerily like I'm, I'm saying eerily because it's so like you know like in a weird way it's so the situation is so similar first of all 
dead, you know, like Stark's dad. I, I saw him in the flashback. Where is that? His dad, his brother, and him. And this dude, his older son and the younger son, exactly looks the same. How much of a coincidence is this? Like, it's so weird. Like I said, I was thinking something weird is going on here. Maybe some kind of a, <laughs> I don't know, like some kind of a demon has like done some kind of a magic or something. That's how similar it was. Even the situation was so similar, you know, when they came and they saw the little kid kind of, you know, like using his sword to practice and he like, you know, the guy like moves past him and Stark was like, oh, who's that? And he said, like, oh, that's the younger son. And uh, even that was so similar. The whole situation was so similar. They looked exactly the same, you know, like Stark and the young older brother and him and his father. I'm trying to find that section where they show his father in the flashback. Where is that? Um, because I need to see. Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay, now okay, I'm, I'm in that section here. I can see in the flashback his father, Stark's father and his brother, you know, his brother exactly looks like this guy, this kid who, you know, the, 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 who, who the, the, father, the father lost, looks exactly like him, while the father, like Stark's father, looks almost, not exactly I would say, looks almost like this guy. This guy's wearing the eye patch and just take the eye patch out, it's exactly the same. It's so weird. I was really, I was like, what's happening? Like this, this amount of coincidence is such a, like, I feel like this is like some kind of a parallel world version of their family. That's what it looked like, you know? Like, the, <laughs> the guy looks exactly like his father, almost very, like, you know, similar. And even when he took out his eye patch, the, the scar, exactly in the same pla place, you know? The facial structure, the hairstyle, you know, everything looks the same. His brother, his older brother, looks exactly like this you know, like the picture on the wall looks exactly like him. Um, so, like, it's so, like, the coincidence is crazy, I have to say. The whole situation's coincidence is so crazy. And, like, you know, if you said something like, oh, this is a parallel version of, parallel world version of Stark and his family, I would actually believe it. Like, because they look so similar. <laughs> Everything, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, but there was one difference. There was a one big difference in this whole thing. That is, this guy, his attitude toward his son, that is his younger son, and Stark's dad's attitude towards him. Stark's dad was like, oh, like, he is worthless. I don't care about him. That's what he was. While this guy, he's like, yeah, um, yeah, my younger son is, you know, like, he's not that talented, but I know that he'll be better than me in the future. You know, he, he'll bloom later on. And, you know, like, he, he'll become better. So, that is the only big difference. You know, he, he, had, he has faith in his son. Even though he's not able to properly express it. You know, that's his situation. While Stark's dad was full on, like, oh, I don't care about him. You know, he's worthless. You know, just that. So, that was the only big difference. Other than that, they looked the same and everything was, like, so same. And, damn, that part was really crazy. I was so surprised seeing this. And for a moment, I actually thought that was his brother, you know, on the, on the wall, the picture. But yeah, there you go. So yeah, that was this episode. And in the end, obviously Stark, he did tell Stark to stay here, but Stark was like, no, you know what? Like, uh, my situation is similar to you, so I want to go through this journey. And, uh, you know, the person who took care of me, I want to go to him and tell him about the stories. So yeah, that's what happened. And then they left. <clears throat> so there you go. <clears throat> that was this episode. Okay. Okay, so wait. So another thing I need to mention here is... I don't know, but there's like a weird... like a, 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 Not a weird, I would say. But there's a feeling I'm getting. Obviously, it's pretty obvious that Stark and Fern are probably going to end up together. You know? Um, but, you know, like, I feel like there's, like, a part of me that is thinking, like, you know, like, a sign, I feel like later on, I don't know, not now, obviously, but later on in the future, 
I feel like he'll start liking free run, like in a in a more romantic sense. That's what the vibe, the like that's the feeling I'm getting. I doubt free is going to feel any of that, but you know, like from his perspective, I feel like that's what's going to happen because there was a few things in this episode that kind of indicated that. There was like that one section, you know, like, like first of all, he always talks about like older ladies and everything. <laughs> Then there was that whole section, you know, when like they were dancing, Fern and uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Stark, and he kind of looks at that while Freen is just eating, and Sign is like, "Oh, should we dance?" And Freen is like, "Oh no, I'm busy eating," and then he kind of looks a little bit disappointed and like you know kind of looks away. So that whole section, like, and and there's a few other sections previously as well. I got the vibe that I don't know about Freen, but I'm pretty sure that he in the future. Will probably start liking free run but i don't know that's just a guess i'm making but you know that's what i'm feeling from this whole like you know from the interactions that he and free run has been having but anyways so that is it that was uh like you know today's episode now i'm going to talk about this episode scene by scene um in the first part of this episode we get to see them you know kind of in the in the little carriage going towards that village and you can see Fern is feeling as falling asleep. Now, this was the first indication as to what's going on in the village, you know, with the whole curse thing. Uh, obviously, at that point, we didn't realize that. But Fern kind of like, like droops down, almost falling asleep. And uh, yeah, they move on towards the village. While on the way, they were kind of having, you know, like some funny conversations, like, you know, like, <laughs> like, Sign was like, oh, no, you know what's uh, missing in this party? And they were like, oh, I wonder what it is, you know, like, and uh, um, they were like, oh, maybe a thief, you know, since Freedon always runs towards the mimics. And he's like, oh, no, obviously not. You know, I'm talking about an older lady. <laughs> we're missing that. <laughs> right. Anyways, all joking aside, when they go to the, um, the village, they see that everyone's asleep. It's like a mass, uh, you know, like. I don't know, like a mass, like sleeping, like, you know, thing. Everyone's like falling asleep. And they're like, so this is the, uh, you know, like, like work of a curse. So, okay, so they kind of, hmm, they kind of talk about what's the difference between a curse and normal magic. So this one, this part was quite interesting because, you know, like, now that I listen to this whole explanation, it kind of makes sense. She says, um, those which humankind has yet to unravel are known as curses. Okay, like magic. Yeah, okay, wait a minute. Let me go back a little bit more. Yeah, stuff like falling asleep or making, into, making people into stone. Those which humankind has yet to unravel are known as curses. That makes sense, actually, you know, like, obviously, if you think about it, like, what's the difference between magic and a curse? Oh, magic is magic. But how can someone say that this is not a magic, but a curse? Something that cannot be, I guess you could say, countered by, you know, human, hum humanity's magic. That is a curse. That makes sense, you know. So, humanity's magic cannot explain the principles behind them or how to re remove them. So Stark is like, wait, so is everything doomed here? Freedon is like, no, I said humanity's magic. The magic of the goddess, which priests use, is a different story. And again, it makes sense that why can priests take out curses? You know this thing? If you played a, like, you know, like a JRPG, you'll know this pretty well. You know, in JRPGs, in certain JRPGs, not every single one of them, you know, like when you go out uh, adventuring with your party and suddenly you come across an enemy that curses you, you know, in some games, in some JRPGs, uh, obviously in some JRPGs, the curse just leaves after a few moments or you maybe you have like some kind of a potion, you drink it, you can like, you know, like take out that curse. But in some JRPGs, there is like an, like a, like an extra, like a mechanic where you cannot take out the curse. What you have to do is you have to go to like a nearby town or a village and uh, go to a priest and they can take out the curse for you for a little amount of, uh, of money. In few JRPGs, they do this. And that's exactly what's happening here. That's what Freeran says. 
like the magic of the goddess, which priests use is a different story. So priests can take out the, you know, like the, um, the curse. And it makes sense. You know, this is one thing I really like about this anime. There's so many things um, that I feel like not only this, but there's a few sections, like, you know, like a few other things as well in the previous episodes I remember, you know, uh, that there's a few things that we kind of know and we kind of think that it's pretty obvious. For example, this one, that priests can take out curses. But why? Have we ever thought about it? They kind of explain that. You know, like Freedom here explains it by saying that since priests can use god magic magics of goddesses, that's why it works on curses. You know, unlike humanity's magic, which is not able to understand the principles behind a curse. It makes sense, you know, like these type of things which feel like common sense, like, oh, priests can take out a curse. I don't think, at least not I, at least I haven't really thought deeper into it and questioned that, oh, why does that work? Why does it work like that? Why can priests only take out, like, you know, curses? Why can not a normal person do it? I never thought about it like that. But this show kind of explains it. This has happened multiple times before in previous episodes as well, where very, like, you know, obvious things, you know, are brought up, which I never really think about, and they kind of explain it, and I'm like, oh, damn, that's kind of interesting. I never thought about it like that. And since it, like, you know, takes a lot of things from JRPGs, like, the whole structure is like a JRPG, is very entertaining, because, you know, I have played a lot of JRPGs, like, like you know, like, like not like the modern day JRPGs. I'm talking about the back in the day turn based JRPGs where you go to like a <laughs> where you're like the hero and like in a village and you little by little you start recruiting party members and then you give them like equipment and stuff. You go out fight like you know like monsters and you know that kind of JRPGs. Um, nowadays JRPGs are very different. You know. But back in the days, those type of JRPGs, and they had all these mechanics, you know, which are so interesting, like we can see those here as well. And it's very entertaining to, you know, like kind of see this story unfold. Um, right, anyways. So. Right, a few other things that Freedom says, the magic of the goddess is recorded in holy scriptures um, and can only be used by the owners of the said scripture. There you go. Like the demon's magic, we don't understand the principles behind most of it. <coughs> okay. So it's not very interesting. Obviously, she's like, yeah, if I, if I cannot learn it, I'm, I don't care about it. <laughs> it's not very interesting. <laughs> so anyways. And uh, so they're like, what should we do? Sign is like, I've tracked the demon, like, you know, the, the monster. So let's go. And here we can see that finally Stark and, you know, like, Fern little by little starts feeling the effect of the magic, uh, of the curse. So the reason why Stark got affected first, I'm guessing, is probably because he's a warrior, you know. And then Fern gets affected because Fern, maybe, she, because she's a mage, she has a little bit of immunity to it. And then Freon gets affected finally because, you know, Freon has a lot of experiences and she's a v way, like, veteran mage way much more of a veteran mage than Fern. So that's why she got affected the last. And obviously, um, since um, Sine is a priest, he doesn't get affected by it. So he was fine throughout the whole way. But you know, Sine, uh, not Sine, uh, Stark falls asleep, so they start carrying Stark. And then Fern, you know, like after they like are sitting like in a bonfire, uh, Fern falls asleep, and Freedan puts both of them together and makes like a little barrier. And then while walking, Freedon also falls asleep. Before falling asleep, Freedon was like, wake me up. Um, I'll take care of it. Do not fight the monster alone. So, you know, Stark, uh, not Stark, Sign was like, oh no, like, you know, like, I only can wake you up for five minutes. But before she can say anything, she falls asleep. So she, he's still a little bit skeptical, but when he comes across the monster, he was like, all right, maybe I can take care of it. I have some offensive magic as well. He tries his best, but obviously one of the attacks that he attacked got deflected by it. So he's like, oh no, it's not working. So what should I do? And he's thinking like, I don't really, I'm, I'm not really that much friends with these people. Like we barely met. We don't really understand each other that much. So even if I wake her up, Within that five minutes, I don't think I'll have enough time to explain everything to her, you know, 
and she will because if she shoots her attack and it deflects and hits the village it'll be doomed so he doesn't want that but at the same time he knows he cannot defeat this monster so he doesn't know what to do and he's like i'm we're not even that much acquainted that you know it's just by looking at me she'll understand what to do so he's conflicted here he doesn't know what to do but then he remembers um Heiter's words where Heiter told him that you know like even we like our party we weren't when she talked about his <clears throat> days of adventuring Heiter told him that <clears throat> we are bad at communication this is one thing that that I you know like that that I believed is, is that I believed in Freeran I had full faith in her and she said that she's going to you know defeat the demon lord I believed in that and that's what happened so just belief and yeah and sign remembers that and sign remembers that free and told him not to fight it alone so signs like all right i'm going to wake you up i'm going to trust in you so hopefully everything works well so he wakes her up and he's like free and um, be careful you know that monster it can deflect he isn't even able to complete his words free just wakes up and shoots it <laughs> It's not able to deflect Freerun's like you know like magic attack. It just gets pierced. That's it. And Freerun said, "Okay." After she has done the whole thing, she's like, "Okay." <laughs> right. So later on, the villagers like thank them. And here you can say Freerun says, <clears throat> "The moment I woke up." I knew that it was that kind that reflects magic. There you go. Like I said, there's one thing that Freeran has: experience. She has plenty of it. She woke up, she looked at it, and she's like, "Oh, I know what type of thing that is. It can deflect magic, so I should use something that's not. She's, it's not going to be able to deflect. That's it. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> and they're like, "Yeah, it's all thanks to you, Sign." Which is true, obviously. You know, you have to say that Sign was probably the one that did the most in this. You know. He like the biggest thing that he could do. He did it is that woke up Freeran. That's all they needed, you know. And yeah, so he is the MVP of this mission, I guess you could say. <laughs> he's like in the end, he's like the lady from the village was pretty. <laughs> right. Anyways, now that was the first part. Then there was the next part where they are in Voy. What was the name of the place? Voik or something like that. It's just before all all burst you know it's like the passageway through it so you know like they're like all right let's go but friend is like stop we don't have money so what do we do like <laughs> good timing that guy comes in you know and that guy is like i don't remember his name he comes in and immediately he's like checking out um start <laughs> and he's like yeah, you'll do come with me appearance isn't bad to either so yeah okay his name is orden okay so yeah they he took them to his mansion and feels like what's happening you know like i i know your grandfather he was also very like you know uh, overbearing just like you he, he literally just brushes off freelance like you know like <laughs> comment and he's like Oh, like you know, like what's your name? He asks Stark his name and everything where he lived and all that, you know. And uh, so he's like, "I need your help. You know, you you need to stay here for a while and you know, like act as my son." And he also says, "I can give you money." At first, Freeran was like, "Oh, like no, let's go." But Fen is like, "Freeran, look at this. You know what's funny?" She looks at the money and she's like, she's like, what are those copper coins? Is this the first time she's looking at money? So she literally doesn't know what money is. I guess it makes sense. She's been living for so long, and I think she just lived in the, you know, that that place where she just lived there and and picked up like like herbs and vegetables, and ate those. That's all she did, and all like you know, and she. I I think he she doesn't have any concept of what money is. She doesn't know what it is. 
or doesn't understand what is prob probably like she obviously she understands what money is that's not what i'm trying to say i think she she's so like you know like out of touch with this whole like world like you know like like he looks at she looks at the copper coin and she's like what are these copper coins she doesn't she probably doesn't even know that that's the currency like that's what i'm trying to say yeah obviously she has what she knows what money is that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is probably that she doesn't even know like what exactly is the money what are those coins so she asks her what are those or maybe i don't know like i don't know like you know what whatever um but it was still pretty funny when she looked at the coin she was like what are those coins <laughs> uh, anyways and uh, they're like we can pay how much 10 i think gold coins or something like that he says i, I forgot the you know like the thing and that means a lot of money so it's like all right okay we'll listen to you so yeah obviously <laughs> um stark is the one who has to do everything so he's grumbling and everything either way so here um the guy oh, i again forgot his name for what was his name for or no or then okay there you go or then or then so Orden uh, like takes him to the like you know like the the big picture and tells him that oh this at first I actually thought that was his brother you know like <laughs> Stark's brother he looks so similar but anyways he kind of says like oh this is my big like like elder son he died in you know like the battlefield and so now you have to play his role for a little while there's a little uh, banquet we will be having and we have you have to learn everything for there you have to learn how to dance you have to like learn how to you know like do your etiquette and everything all that stuff so there you go <clears throat> and we're, we're gonna pay you for that in the end so <clears throat> right then after that he's like giving them like a little tour of everything and uh, yeah so starts like training starts like they like he's like training every day like horse riding the etiquette dancing and all while sign is just having like <laughs> having like you know like like meals at the local tavern um fern and fern is just having like donuts and everything i don't know what those are like desserts pastries <laughs> oh my god they're just while stark is just you know like learning all of this so after that, Stark kind of like you know like is a lot better at that, and he she kind of like he kind of meets Fern and kind of like kneels down and like you know grabs her hand, and she's like, it doesn't suit you, <laughs> right? So okay, so after that, later on, Stark kind of asks Orden that aren't you a little bit too cold about this? But he's like, this is what my you know like son's like the final wish. You know, it's not that I'm happily doing this, but you know, like we have to do it. We have to keep the morale high. And little by little, after talking to him, Stark realizes that it's just that he's awkward. It's not that he's arrogant or, like, you know, heartless. He's just awkward. He cannot express his feelings, unlike his own dad, who was just, you know, like heartless in a way, if you think about it. And he kind of comes across his younger son, and when he sees him practicing, um. He says that, oh, he's to be my heir, but he'll show his little improvement. Stark asks him, you know, like, and you can see that he was given the sword to practice and he was kind of shaking. So he kind of grabs his shoulder and he's like, it's fine. This is not your village. You know, like, you can do it. Unlike his father, if you remember, who was just like, oh, he's worthless. He cannot do anything. But, you know, like, he then asks him that, what do you think about your little son? Because he wanted to know, like, is this guy similar to my dad? And he said something kind of similar to his dad, where he was like, yeah, he shows little improvement. But then he also says that, but I know that he can improve, you know. He, he will be stronger than me in the future. And, you know, he, and this is where I'm guessing Stark probably realized that, yeah, he just, he's just, like, like, awkward with his words. And I'm pretty sure that reminded him of Aysen. Because Aysen was literally like that. He was also someone who couldn't express his feelings. You know, with the whole birthday thing, he, he made him like, uh, you know, like a birthday gift, you know, the, the, the little hamburger steak every year. And he didn't even tell him that's because of his birthday. So, you know, that way he was awkward with his own, like, you know, expression of feelings. 
he wasn't able to express it properly that's exactly what this guy is he, he's also like that and that is why you know Stark kind of says that you know what you should tell that to your son you know he'll appreciate it and uh, yeah either way after that you can see um, Orsted uh, or what was his name o Owen oh I'm, I again forgot his name <laughs> like in my head it's always like Orsted you know Orsted from Mus Mushoku Tensei that's the name that's always like kind of hitting my head Orwen, no, o Owen, uh, you know what, whatever his name is, um, he tells Fern to also practice, because he's like, he needs someone to go with, you know, like, he needs a partner, so you go and practice as well, so Fern starts have, having to take the lessons as well, you know, like the etiquette lessons and everything, and yeah, while Fern is just having tea and just reading books, either way, um, in the day of the banquet, you know, like, they both of them are there, um stark you know like invites fern for a dance and they dance beautifully you know you can see that at first fern was kind of you know like a little bit scared to kind of do it but then stark takes the lead and he properly guides her and they properly dance and yeah it was great and you can see fern is just eating the sign does tell her that oh should we dance and he's like no i'm, I'm busy eating <laughs> oh my god but yeah, anyways, yeah, later on we see him, you know, like that the guy Owen or whatever his name is, take out the iPads and he was like, just because of this, my son died. You know, that day I was supposed to go there. If I didn't have this injury, maybe things would have been different and Wirt wouldn't have died. And uh, like I said, he looks so much like Stark's dad, you know, even his face, the scar and everything is the same place. It's like a parallel world version of him. Um, but either way, Stark comes in and Stark is like, you know, like, so yeah, it's over. And here he does say that, oh, you can stay with us. But he's like, no, not I have something to do. And he kind of tells him that, you know what, you don't really have a home to return to. So why not? Why don't you stay there? Stay here. But he says, like, you know what? I know a person like you uh, who was as, who's as awkward as you and, you know, like, and he also kind of explains how he had like a little quarrel with his son on the final day. And he told his son something that he, you know, like didn't mean. He was like, don't show me your face. And his son left and that was it. So he regrets that. And yeah, and he's like, you know what? My situation is also similar. Something similar happened to me as well. The person who took care of me, you know, I also kind of went in a different direction to him. But, you know, like I, I, I want to you know before something happens to him i want to go back to him and tell him the stories so i cannot stay here i have something to do and he's like fair enough yeah and for half a day freeran tries to find out the proper grimoire <clears throat> i do wonder by the end of it what she like picked they didn't really show us and you can see stark is looking outside seeing that you know, he is kind of teaching his son now and interacting with him. And he's like, yeah, you know, Stark is like, yes, this is the way, you know, like try to be more honest with your feelings. And yeah, so there you go. That is where it ended. Like I said, this episode, you know, the ending of this episode, everyone gained something, you know, like um, the, the guy he gained, uh, I guess you could say a better understanding as to what he should do, especially with the son the, that he has with him now you know the, the younger son the only like you no know, i guess you could say his only child that is you know like alive um so how to properly interact with him and, and everything he gained that he gained it you know for a little bit amount of time he gained a new son while stark you know like stark also gained a better understanding of himself he gained more knowledge about like these etiquettes and stuff Feed, uh, fern also gained a lot of knowledge about this etiquette and everything um um, and their whole party gained money as well for this whole situation. Freeran gained a grimoire. And, uh, you know, they had a lot of good food while staying here. So overall, everyone kind of, like, won by the end of it. You know, everyone got what they wanted. And, you know, they gained something. So it was a nice ending, you know, in the end. So that was it. That was my reaction to this episode. Episode number 15 of So So No Freeran. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed, comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, I'll check them out. And that is it. 
Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Soul Soul No Free Run. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.